What's up fellow anglers? It's Northern Scripture and today we're going to be putting together a custom buzz bait. So as you can see I've gone out and I've gotten myself a rod here, got myself a single hook because I'm not a fan of tri hooks and this here is just some type of foam. It's pretty much an equivalent to that uh, scrunchy thing that you play around with a pool. And then I got some weights not too many. Wanted to keep it light. This one I want to use close to the surface, so I really don't want it to fall fast at all. And that's why I've also saved the buzz bait for this one, because I do believe that these ones go a little closer to the surface, as opposed to blue foxes. So we're going to see how this goes together. Now I'm going to skip over the parts where I sit here and put the feathers on by hand. And we will come back when uh, we have the first row set up. Alright, step two is complete. Step one being attaching the beads, the spacer, the buzz bait, the hook. And I forgot to mention that uh, the main reason for attaching this is just a, it's a good base to attach all your feathers to. It's nice and flat, so you could also use something else, maybe weighted if you wanted, maybe to be at a deeper depth, which I'm not searching for. But, uh, so we've attached the white feathers, the whole bunch there, they'll be the bottom layer. I've already planned out and cut them to length, so I know exactly what it's going to look like before it's finished. And it just makes it a lot faster for putting it together. So, you just measure everything out, make sure you, you know, you cut a little bit extra just to make sure that you have enough. So you don't have to, in the middle of attaching, go back and cut some more. And I've also closed up the end here now because when I'm handling it, I don't attach all the feathers while I'm got it hooked up to here. I personally don't like this as bulky, but it's good for uh, gluing and whatnot. But holding it on and attaching it with the string, I like to hold it in my hand so I've tied the end now already to its designated length. And uh, for this one, I went with the straight model as well because I find when I make the tail detachable, or movable, it often gets caught with the line when I'm casting out, and I don't want to waste any casts. So I like to stay with the straight and just the hook flopples away, flopples away back in the tail, buried in there and uh, concealed. So uh, we'll move on to step two here. All right, step three is complete. The red feathers are attached. Kind of a blood look there. I always like that, put it on most of my uh, lures. Now when you attach the second layer of feathers, you're going to want to, before you start, wrap some string around the first layer and build up kind of a slope. So when you are applying the second layer, your feathers tend to stick up more as opposed to lay, lie flat which always just gives a better presentation when it's flowing through the water. So I'm going to go ahead and attach the third row. All right, step three is complete. We've only added some more white on to bury down the red because that is not a highlight color for me on this lure. So we bury down the red a little bit, add the white, going to trim off the access sticking out the other end. And uh, then we will move on to applying what I call the detail layer, the main focus of color and pattern that I want to shine through on this lure. All right, step four is complete. I've put on the detailed layer, which is a lot of uh, cream colored and light browns, dark browns. And uh, after you've done all that, you just trim up the ends here and then make your final wrap around the tip to make it a nice cone shape. And you will have your custom buzz bait all ready to go. All right, the last step is now complete. We've tied up the front nice and tight to the ball. I've also glued it to it so there's no water drag that drips in there and maybe screws up the knot you've made or the tie. And you have a custom buzz bait here all ready to go. Didn't take too long. Looks pretty good, I'd have to say. 
And it's really good for anything, depending on what weight you make it. This one here is for really, really close to the top of the water. There's almost no weights on it. Just a few here. Almost none in the back. And it's pretty much good for any fish, too. With this pattern here, I've caught almost everything. And different sizes. You know, you want to use a really big one, you're going to catch an absolute monster. And more than likely, when they hit, they go crazy for it. So I hope you learned something today and stay tuned for more Bucktail Madness. Mm -hmm.